If you look at an MRI of 40,000 people, you'll see that gluteofemoral fat, fat that stores in the hips and the thighs, although it might not be exactly fun, it doesn't have nearly as much of a negative effect in terms of our like, health outcome. However, central adiposity, fat that's stored in the central abdomen, that is where the problems occur. Not even necessarily with visceral fat, but just central adiposity in general, storing fat in that sort of apple shape. Now, I learned something about carbohydrates and how they affect that. It's based upon a relatively new study that I found very interesting. So we're gonna break it on down. After this video, I invite you to check out my friends over at Unbun Foods. So whether you eat carbs or you don't eat carbs, these guys are awesome, okay? They are a low carb bread company. So they've got bagels, they've got bread, they've got tortillas, and everything is made from almond flour, from egg whites, from psyllium. So really good quality stuff with high amounts of fiber and no ingredients that you can't pronounce. The stuff is super, super awesome. And I've been using it just all over the place. I use it as hamburger buns, I use the bagels. Anyway, I put a link down below as well as a special link. They're a big supporter of this channel. They do support this content and I appreciate that. And I really invite you to check them out because not only are you supporting this channel in doing so, but you're trying something that is super awesome and getting a special discount. So that link is down below in the description. It's called Unbun Foods. And specifically, check out their tortillas, their untortillas. They're a game changer if you're doing something low carb. Okay, so what's kind of funny is if you look at some studies, it's going to indicate that all carbs are created equal and all carbs in excess are going to be bad when it comes down to gaining fat specifically visceral fat or central adiposity. Well, I find that hard to believe because I don't believe that a calorie is a calorie. I do feel like different carbs do different things. And I feel like we have a degree of bioindividuality, like Bob may respond to certain carbs differently than Jane does, et cetera, et cetera. So I have two studies. The first one is a more broad study that was published in Nutrition Reviews and took a look at 16 different studies of people that have what's called normal weight obesity. It's basically being skinny fat, where you have just your, your normal BMI, but you have a lot of fat just in your middle. Okay, well with this study, they found that, okay, most people that had normal weight adiposity ended up having high levels of glucose, hyper, uh, hyperglycemic, they had high levels of insulin, hyperinsulinemia, and they were generally insulin resistant. Now what this tells us is that, okay, these people probably ate a lot of carbohydrates. Now. That's cool, but that leaves a lot to be desired. And it frustrates me because as someone that really tries to advocate for just whatever works best for the person, I don't like to say a blanket statement and say, too many carbs are going to trigger visceral fat because some people do oxidize carbs okay. So now there's a newer study out of uh, published in Nutrition Metabolism. This one's really interesting because this one goes a little bit more in depth, literally. Okay, it took a look at 102 people. Okay, and these 102 people were going in for surgery and they asked them, is it okay if we take a little sample of your sub-Q fat and also your visceral fat and uh, ask you to log your food, your previous food, let us know what you eat. And they volunteered and they said yes. So they got samples of their fat and then after the surgery, they said, okay, now go ahead and write out what you typically eat, write out your, your diet, okay? And what they were measuring within the fat is they were measuring a peptide that is known as a pellin. Now, a pellin is a peptide that is secreted, it's called an adipokine, okay? Now, much like leptin, leptin is also a peptide that is secreted by fat. Now, Leptin, we have a whole different discussion on, but apelin is generally associated with insulin resistance. When you see high concentrations of apelin, a lot of times you'll see insulin resistance along with that. So that's why they were testing this. We're like, we wanna see people that have, you know, whatever, okay? Well, it was fascinating because they found that people that consumed high amounts of carbohydrates, just in volume, overall total carbohydrates, didn't necessarily have higher levels of apelin. So they weren't necessarily developing traits of insulin resistance. That would go against the grain of what a lot of people would think. But what did increase levels of apelin based upon diet questionnaire were people that ate high glycemic carbs a lot, even if the amount wasn't all that much. So it's not about quantity. It really is about quality. Not all carbohydrates are created equal. So you can't just say, oh, I consume 500 grams of carbohydrates, so I'm good. If you're consuming 500 grams of carbohydrates in pixie sticks, it's gonna be completely different than if you're consuming 500 grams of carbohydrates in legumes. The point is you're probably not gonna be able to consume 500 grams of carbohydrates in legumes because you're gonna get full first, so that certainly factors in. But this apelin, that is, that is suggesting that certain foods are contributing to insulin resistance, not just carbohydrates as a blanket statement. That being said, doing something like a lower carb protocol is certainly going to limit the amount of high glycemic foods you take in, so it can certainly help, 
But if you are someone that still wants to eat carbohydrates and you are concerned about, hey, why do I have this apple shape? What is going on? Perhaps you need to switch over to like some beans, some legumes, some chickpeas, some very low glycemic carbohydrates for a little while and see how that works. It could be an insulin thing. It could be a number of different factors that have to do. Now, I will give a thoughtful nod to the fact that people that typically are going to be consuming higher glycemic foods might also be consuming other things that are hyperpalatable and other foods that aren't so good that are contributing to this apelin secretion. Okay, maybe they're consuming trans fats. Maybe they're, okay, so definitely, if someone that's typically consuming pixie sticks is probably not being conscious of what kind of fat they're using, right? You're not gonna see someone saying, I'm going to eat a bunch of pixie sticks, but then I'm gonna pay very close attention to make sure that I use the right quality avocado oil and olive oil, if you catch my drift. The point is, this new emerging science really shows that foods and macros are not all created equal. We have to look at this big picture. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.